energy production, fast mass transport, computers and communication systems. All of these and many more depend on materials developed in the 20th century and on their properties, mechanical, optical, electrical. Without them, modern civilization could not function and technical progress would cease if new materials were not continuously being developed. Material science and engineering is central to this development. By learning how atoms are assembled together to make up the wide range of engineering materials, the material scientists and engineers provide the knowledge required to use existing materials more efficiently and to create the new materials for tomorrow's needs. From man's earliest days, materials development has set the pace for the progress of civilization through the stone, bronze and iron ages to the industrial revolution with its need for engineering metals, iron and steel and on to the present day with its diversity of materials. And only through a thorough understanding of the internal structure of them can we reliably predict and safely use their properties. But the development of structure depends upon how the materials are produced, their chemistry, how they're shaped, and what thermal and mechanical processes are involved. All of these will affect the arrangements of the atoms and their aggregates in the microstructure of the final product, and hence the properties that the material will exhibit. The material scientist and engineer must therefore be concerned with the preparation, properties and applications of materials. To understand all this requires an interdisciplinary approach using physics, chemistry and mathematics. The honours degree course at Imperial College in material science and engineering is internationally recognised as providing the finest training in this subject and the graduates from the course are greatly sought after by industry. With an undergraduate intake of about 40 students each year and an exceptionally large research activity, the department is one of the largest in this subject in the UK and attracts well-qualified students, both undergraduate and postgraduate, from around the world. The undergraduate course lasts three years and leads to an honours Bachelor of Engineering degree. The undergraduate course is exceptional in its breadth and in the balance that it strikes between the physical, chemical and engineering approaches to the understanding of materials. The processing structure and properties of all materials, metals, ceramics, glasses, polymers, composites, electrical materials, are covered in the course. The first two years are common, that is to say all students attend the same lectures and laboratory classes. In a typical week there are about 11 lectures and two to three afternoons of laboratory work. The intention of the laboratory classes is to illustrate the concepts introduced in the lectures and to instill an understanding of the scope and limitations of the various experimental techniques and to gain experience in the gathering and interpretation of scientific data. The large research activity of the department ensures that the level and range of equipment available to the students is excellent, ranging from the simplest light microscope to the most advanced electron microscopes, capable of characterizing materials microstructure down to the near atomic level. Throughout the first two years, tutorials are arranged to consolidate the information acquired during the lectures and laboratory classes. A tutorial consists of four to five students meeting with a lecturer in his or her office to discuss and to integrate the subject matter of the various lecture courses. The topics for the tutorials may be chosen by the lecturer or by the students and are dealt with in a relaxed and informal atmosphere. In addition to academic tutorials, all students have a personal tutor who is a member of the teaching staff. The idea is that over a period of time a good, friendly relationship can develop and any problems, small or large, academic or social, can be discussed together. A vital component of any degree course is to teach the students how to work and learn independently and to exercise their critical faculties. Private study is essential for this. The departmental library is well equipped with the necessary reference books and research journals and students also have access to the larger college library 
and to the Science Museum Library, which is also on the campus. In the third and final year of the course, about 40% of the lectures are common, and students select the remaining 60% from a wide range of electives. This enables the student to specialise in certain areas, such as materials processing or electrical materials, for example, and to take some non-technical subjects, such as humanities or social studies. A major activity in the third year is a research project where the student has the opportunity to make an original contribution to our knowledge of materials. This year, one student studied cement. Well, I uh, made various cement pastes with different amounts of water and I carried out, I cut them, let the cement paste harden, cut them into small cubes and then carried out compressive strength tests and also looked at the fracture surfaces with the electron microscope. So, did you enjoy doing this project? Yes, I did. It was quite a challenge and it was a surprise to me at how much work I could do in 11 weeks. Entry to all universities is administered by the University's Central Council on Admissions, or UCA for short. An application form is filled in, listing up to five universities or courses which you would like to apply for. With good O-levels or good reference from school or college, you will then receive an invitation to visit the department, irrespective of where Imperial College is placed in your list of choices on the UCA form. The visit commences with a welcome from a senior member of the academic staff or the admissions tutors, who will give a brief outline of the course and information about the department and career opportunities for graduates in this subject. It is usual then to tour the college and to see the research and teaching facilities in the department. The tour guides are students who will also take you to lunch where you will have plenty of time to talk to them and find out more about college life. Later on you will be given a non-technical interview by a member of the academic staff. In most cases an offer of a place can be made at this stage. And we make the standard offer, same offer, to every student we want on the course. We don't vary the offer depending on the ability of the student. And that standard offer is an average of CCC in maths, physics and chemistry. So that's the offer I'd like to make to you. Um, now that should the Imperial College campus is situated in the west of London, near to Hyde Park and the major museums. This location means that our students have access to all the major attractions which only London can offer. However, this doesn't mean that our local environment is typical of a city centre. The college buildings enclose a quiet and private campus containing lawns and gardens. There are many quiet streets and of course there are the large open spaces of Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens. Accommodation at the college is of two kinds, the halls of residence and student flats. All first-year students are given a place in college or in University of London accommodation. The major site for the halls of residence is on that part of the campus known as Prince's Gardens. There, several halls are situated, together with a shop, restaurant and bar complex. And the health centre and the day nursery are near. For many social activities, there is no need to leave the campus because the college has a large range of amenities to offer on site including a swimming pool, language laboratory, tennis and squash courts, and a rifle range. The Union Building is the centre of many student activities, ranging from the organisation of Rag Week to the production of the student newspaper Felix. At the beginning of each year, a fair is held to show the new students what clubs and societies they can join. These cater for almost every conceivable activity, from hang gliding and rowing to chess and computing. There are also clubs for overseas students so that they can meet their fellow countrymen within the college and keep up with news from home. Sport figures strongly in the student activities and Imperial College fields teams in almost every sporting event. It has good training facilities and its own sports grounds just outside London. The college also has a strong musical tradition as might be expected given the close proximity of the Albert Hall and the Royal College of Music. Because the Department of Materials is smaller than most in the college, our students take a more active part in the social life of the department. 
This leads to good relationships between staff and students, and each year they join together to hold a cricket match after the summer examinations. This year the Mayor of Wandsworth also came along. He turned out to be an expert bowler and dismissed the student's star batsman. The outcome of the match is generally not clear, mainly because the number in each team is variable, but it is entertaining for both players and spectators and provides an enjoyable afternoon off. The final event of the year is a party held for the third year students on the last day of term after they have learnt their degree results. For some this is their last official day in the college before starting out on their new careers. But let the students speak for themselves. I was undecided as to whether I wanted to specialise in something or do engineering or you know, I just wasn't really sure at all. And um, I heard about material science from going to a different open day. And um, it grew from there and I realised that, that to start with would combine my maths, physics and chemistry but wouldn't make me specialise too greatly. I wasn't really sure between engineering and pure science but this, well, metallurgy is my first choice. I've enjoyed London because there's always so much to do. Um, you sort of never stuck for a, to go out and do something in the evenings or something like that. And London's just so exciting. There's a lot of people who would say that it's expensive and a pretty um, un uncomfortable place to live. But I think that the advantages of everything going on and the excitement that you can get out of it far outweighs that. The college is very well organised in that respect as concerns what they call the milk round. And uh, that's what I did this year. I only applied to seven or eight different firms. I had, I think it was, five offers. And I finally decided to go and work for Rio Tinto Zinc. So I'm going to be one of their graduate trainees. Um, hopefully looking to uh, get a post in management in about two years time. I've enjoyed everything. Um, the course, to my mind, is well taught. Um, I've been an academic rep for three years and I've served on the staff student councils. I particularly enjoyed the process metallurgy option this year. Um, the long project was great fun the, um, and certain other parts of this year have been very enjoyable. I've thoroughly enjoyed my three years here. I think the third year has been more enjoyable as you sort of get to know everything in greater detail and you know people better and you know places better. That's what I've found. 